for joining us again. Um, I'm really excited about my second guest here tonight, so we're just going to jump right in. And I would like to thank you and welcome you, Mr. Jeff Petchel, to the show tonight. Thank you, um, Michelle, for having me. Uh, I am so excited to be sitting across from you. Well, I, thank you. <laughs> This is amazing. Um, it's been a while. It's, it's been, been a, while. a while. Yeah. Um, we went to school together. Yes. Went to Weathersfield High School together, and um, now we're here. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would like to just ask you a few questions, and we're going to start off right at the very beginning. So, okay. how did this all start for you? Tell uh, me when you were when you started your career in music. Well, let's see, probably back at Highcrest, uh, we had a guitar class and a teacher named Miss Coppler and Mrs. Fisher. Mrs. Fisher had a guitar class and then went to, my parents both played instruments, and then I went to Webb and John Sales taught, had a guitar class there, you might have known Mr. John. Mr. Sales. Mr. Sales, and I'm still friends with him. And so all those influences had me starting back then when I was a kid. 12, 13 years old. That's great. I remember Mr. Sales' class, and he actually made me play the drums, and I went home and I said, Mom, I really want to play the drums. And she said, girls don't play the drums, and she bought me a clarinet. So, you know, but here you are. So did he make you play the drums? Did you pick up that first guitar and say, this is where I need to be? Yeah, I think he was a great teacher. Um, he was great. I think the big advantage of being in seventh grade back in whatever year that was, I don't want to date myself too far, but, <laughs> but there were songs on the radio, and we learned those songs, Steve Miller, Leonard Skinner, uh, from John, within days, yeah. you were playing songs with 30 of your friends right. that were on the radio, and I distinctly remember the music room, and uh, I think it was Tim or Tom Gothers painted it. And just painted all these musicians, and it was just the coolest place it at was. Webb to be. And um, I knew I was like I had this: do I play soccer or practice guitar? Going on, you know. Well, I, I guess we see which one you practice <laughs> more, right? Well, <laughs> went, yeah. Went with what felt good. That's awesome. So, and when you when you first picked up the guitar and you started playing and there was of course Mr. Sales is is one of your first inspirations and your other music teacher um who who would you think would be your biggest inspiration well i would have to just going back i mean first my dad showed me how to play some chords my mother played the piano and they both sang so it wasn't it wasn't odd for me to hear music every day or every other day or so I didn't feel weird expressing myself. And then once I heard Hendrix, like in seventh, eighth grade, I knew there was something cool about that, the way he dressed, the songs he sang. That was a big influence. And um, my uncle, my mother's brother, my uncle George, he played in a band. And he's a professional musician to this day. He's in his 80s. Wow. Just had a stroke. My Uncle George, if you're out there, and he made a record, and he played on the Grand Ole Opry, and so I think he was a, a, a big influence, even though he didn't live that close to us, or didn't spend a lot of time with us, he had an indirect influence on me, too. So. Right, because it's, it's all in the family, so you had, a, you had a great support system then, because your parents were, were right there, allowing you to play your music. Yeah, they were pretty uh, supportive. I, I think they didn't want me to go into it professionally because they saw what my uncle went through, and um, they just thought that that profession isn't the, the uh, most uh, you know noble profession in the world. But and the, so I so I did go to college. My father said to me, "I won't respect you." Sorry, Dad, for saying this, <laughs> but he said, "I won't respect you spiritually, emotionally, some you know rap like that unless you get your degree." So I went to. Uh, Central, and I majored in elementary ed. I minored in psychology uh, while I was playing in bands, and I taught school. You did? Yes. And, and what uh, school? Let's. Well, I did my student teaching at Dwight School and uh, and Highcrest, where I went to school. So, um, And then I taught for a while. And then this agent saw my band uh, in Hartford, and he said, you know, I can book this band four nights a week, but you'd have to hang up the teaching thing. So um, 
tough choice. That was a tough choice. Yeah. It was yeah. that was a, a, a part in the road, and I I left the teaching. I told my father I got my degree for him, and and I'm going to just become a full time musician. And he wasn't thrilled, but um, again, my parents were supportive of, over my decision. So. And I've been just not, you know, just keep going, keep going since that day, you know. Keep powering through. That's, That's it. good. Thank goodness. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, and we also have, um, you know, I have this this nice little pile going on here. So um, with your music career and your your choice to go into teaching and the teaching that you did, yes, um, you were obviously very busy for a long time. And um, one of my one of the the things that I always wonder about is is how do you do all that? How do you balance it? You know how how do you make your schedule and, and keep all your appointments? How does that work? Well, it wasn't always easy until recently. I mean, in the last maybe ten years, I have a manager, an agent, and uh, people to handle all that stuff for me, which which lets me concentrate. I'm making CDs uh, and working with various artists and and just putting the music together and concentrate on the show. And yeah. so I think that's why those people serve a great, you know, uh, purpose for a musician because if you're trying to handle all that and try to be creative and, and record and, and, and to get marketed properly, that shouldn't be the musician's job. Right. Yeah. Right. So, it's a job in and of itself. It is. Absolutely. So let's talk about this this pile that I have here. I, there's quite a few CDs, and um, I know that uh, when I used to uh, be one of your groupies, um, <laughs> I used to love to go see uh, you play with Texas Flood. Yes, yes. So is that pretty much uh, where you got started? Because I hear that you were in a band way prior to that and it, and it and it your career actually started while you were in high school yeah i would or even say even school. junior high when i was in junior high we had the web rock band and sean shellsthorpe was the manager and mr sales used to let him go to the um he just passed away sean he did and he used to book the bands in all the uh, junior high schools in Connecticut for their dances. So we were allowed to get out of school to either go do assemblies in other schools or play their dances as the web rock band. And John Sales uh, was a genius in the sense where if you weren't musical, you either did the lights or you built the sound systems and he'd get the plans. The kids would build them in wood shop. So everybody felt a part of the team. That's awesome. And so that really taught me of how to... Uh, you know how to how to uh, deal with people and get a, a bunch of people working for the same, same goal. That's right. And to put on a show and to have a set list and this person sings these songs and this person and the segues and the stage clothing and it's really just occurring to me now how beneficial that was. Wow. And to get out of school. Exactly. Which was Amazing. great, yeah. especially in junior high school. Yeah. So what was the name of that band? The Web know? Rock Band. The Web Rock Band. And then so that moved on to... Uh, that moved on to Onyx, and that was in the high school. Right. And uh, I did not uh, go into Onyx. I started my own band called Sapphire. Sapphire. And uh, we, we did the same thing. We played all the, we, you know, the, the junior high dances. And then I moved on to a host of other bands after that. I joined Orphan. I was in the Daily Planet. I, uh, the list goes on and on. But uh, the Texas Flood thing was because I, I loved Hendrix so much. And Hendrix had uh, influenced Stevie Ray Vaughan. And Stevie Ray Vaughan used to dress like Jimmy and do all Hendrix tunes. And so he came out with his record called... Uh, Texas Flood, his first album. Right. And then once I heard him on the radio, I said, I have to figure out how he's getting that sound. Yeah. And so once I figured out how to get that sound, I became his biggest fan, one of his biggest fans. And then I studied how he achieved that sound. And then I went out while he was alive doing most of his music, dressing like Hendrix and Stevie, dressed with the hat and the plum shirts and all that. And... Um, I had some success doing that. A little bit. Yeah, and then um, I, a lot of people said to me, "You have to start writing your own music. If you just, if you just, you know, just do Steve Ray Vaughan the rest of your life, you'll go nuts, and you, you just won't. You, you'll just go nuts." Yeah. And I, you know, 
I got a chance to play with Stevie's band. Uh, they came up. Tommy Shannon stayed at my house. We did a bunch of shows together. We bu did a bunch of Stevie songs together. And um, how was that? That, that was has a, that to be was, amazing. That was amazing. And yeah. uh, and so you know, I have seven records here. I'm working on my eighth with uh, Charles Neville, the Neville Brothers. Now, this latest one I have out is with uh, Jay Giles. And we're we're still touring on that album. We're playing. Uh, I think it's okay to say we're playing on March 26th yep. at the Russian Lady in uh, New Haven, a benefit for people who are losing their mortgages. Uh, oh, so that's wow. Jay Giles, Jeff Pitchell, and we're also playing at the Oakdale next September 20th. This uh, is Jay the latest Giles. CD right here. That is it. It's okay. called American Girl. Yeah. American Girl. So, and let's, let, you know, let's talk about this CD a little bit. I mean, even though there's all these other ones sure. here, there's, you know, um, where you're with Texas Flood and a, and a lot of your own music. And yes. obviously each one of these CDs, you have uh, special guests and a, a bunch of famous people that you've played with. So, um, but let's talk about our, your latest one and, and, and tell me about that because there's a, there's a, a special thank you on here back for uh, to to James Woods. So yes, okay. Uh, James Woods saw the famous movie star. He saw us perform in uh, Providence, and he sent someone in to meet me to, to say he wanted to meet me after the show. And I kind of didn't believe it, but I went and met him after the show, and he said, "You know, I'm I'm." I spoke to Bob Dylan last night, and he said that uh, I can't use this particular song. In my movie, I said, well... The Bob Dylan. The Bob Dylan. Yeah. So I was like, wow. And he said, have you written any songs for pictures? I said, um, no, I haven't, but I have a lot of material, and I'm going to California Monday to work on my next album, and I'm writing songs with Jeff Sobar for my next album. And Sobar's won Academy Awards, and it wrote, he wrote The Wind Beneath My Wings, uh, and a lot of other big hits, and we're writing songs just for my record. So he said, well, I'm going to be out in L.A. I'll meet you out there. I'll give you the script, and you can write some songs for the movie. I said, that sounds terrific. So I, I met... Sounds like a great day. Yeah, that was a really <laughs> big thrill, yeah. And so uh, I ke became friends with Woods because of that and composed about nine songs with uh, Jeff Sobar and Gary Nicholson down in Nashville. And then at the same time, I was working on this CD with, with Jay Giles, so... I decided that, well, why don't I just put it all on one thing instead of trying to separate it. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. And so in your, you know, throughout time, you, you've played with so many people. Um, you know, whenever we're, we're chatting, I, I love all the, the little tidbits and the little stories. Um, you know, there's B.B. Uh, King and, and, and um, uh, Peter Tork. Uh, yeah, I mean, not a lot, a lot of, of people know who he is, but right, he's right, a monkey. Right, you know, so. right. Peter Tork and the monkeys. monkeys. We probably did about two years together where Peter joined my band. And uh, we did I'm a Believer every night. We did Last Train to Clarksville. A lot of the uh, monkey hits. And just a good guy. He was living in Connecticut at the time. And uh, I met him through uh, a, a, a guy who lived out in stores, introduced us and... Uh, we did we did about two years together, and um, fun. It was fun. I mean, uh, he's certainly certainly character. a character. He was the funniest monkey of them all. I think he was the, the real comedian. The, yeah, and he still is funny, and uh, he's still going strong. So that's awesome. And so, who else? Um, I know you talked about uh, uh, Clar Clarence Clemens. Yeah, Clarence that? Clemens was. Uh, we did an album together. Um, I think it was the second album. Uh, we did it. We recorded a song called um, "My Babe." Yeah, it's right here, "My Babe." And uh, his guitar player—he had a band in the East Coast, uh, and they had a show at Copley Square in Boston, and they also had a show at the Hard Rock. Well, the guitar player became ill, and his manager, somebody, gave him my number and said. Can you meet Clarence at the Hyatt in uh, Boston, like today at like noon? They call me like eight in wow. the morning, and I'm like, "Yeah, sure, I'll come up there." <laughs> so I, I went up there and I met him, and uh, we had a few drinks, 
and we had a few more drinks. <laughs> and then, like, at 1 in the morning, he handed me a cassette and said, learn these 20 songs for tomorrow for, for noon for a show in Copley Square, and then we're going to go to the Hard Rock Cafe. And it was when Murder Incorporated was out. Uh, that was a, a Bruce Springsteen hit. Wow. And um, so I went back to my hotel room and just learned all those songs. And then the next thing I knew, I was <laughs> You playing. did it. I did it, yeah. And then after that, he, we became friends. We did a lot more shows with Steve Smith and, and Providence. And um, he we, we got around to recording a few songs together, which I thought was... He was one of those musicians that made it to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that was um, really into helping people coming up. And when you don't meet people like that. Yeah. And he was a good good man. He, he just passed away. So um, I'm grateful to him for, for making music with him. He was a, he was a spirit. It all comes up together, you know. I mean. Yeah. So now um, let's talk about. I know that um, I had heard a story uh, a while back, and I thought, "Wow, what a great moment!" Um, so you know, talking about a musician's greatest moments. If I were you, I think it would have been. Um, well, let's talk about heavy hitters. Okay. So, and, and how that came about and kind of when that came about and, and what happened during that time period for you. Well, let's see. I'd say it was probably maybe six, seven years ago. I made this CD called Heavy Hitter, and we decided to go with a baseball theme, and uh, Bob Greenlee and I wrote that song. Bob passed away. Um, and it, it really, it featured the four duets that I had on my first four records. It had a Clarence Clemens duet, had a Dave Mason from Traffic duet, had a Rick Derringer duet, wow. and it had a James Cotton duet. So those four songs, plus a bunch of new material, became Heavy Hitter album, and that was on Pyramid EMI, which was the label, um, and Pyramid had like the Stray Cats, the Doobie Brothers, they had a bunch of really great band so I was pretty honored to be signed by Pyramid but even better they got the music out enough for it to make the billboard charts so um, that was probably my one of my um, better accomplishments was to be on the billboard charts so so that album kind of helped get my name out there more more nationally so. and so the time frame though I mean I was thinking about that pretty cool moment at a uh the baseball stadium up there in Boston. Oh, yeah, there is a coincidence oh, yeah. here. Oh, yeah, there's a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of wasn't that on purpose at I all. I was so proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. The Fenway, Fenway Park. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, the way I landed the Fenway thing was a weird thing, and uh, it was Connecticut Day, and uh, the album was, was number seven on the Billboard charts. It was called Heavy Hitter. It was about baseball, and they asked me to do the national anthem there, and... Uh, that was just a thrill, the biggest thrill, because my family got a chance to come with me, my parents, and the, the Red Sox were just the most gracious, kind, professional outfit I, I could imagine. I, I wasn't expecting that, just that they gave us all shirts and gave us a tour and g gave my family a great great seats, and you get to meet the, the team and all that. and. So that was a big day, a special day. day for my family, yeah. And you said you had spent a couple of, you know, games there with your dad, I too. I did. So. As a kid, my father used to take us there when we were little kids. So for me to take him there and hmm. to, uh, you know, that was a little nerve-wracking. I, You know, even when I look at your cameras here, I'll never forget it. The camera was like two feet from my face when I was singing that in front of the national anthem. In front Not of all an those. easy song to sing. And, and yeah. you know, they make you get to sound check it like really early in the morning. And it's just very, uh, it's more nerve wracking than people think. But so I knew I could people. get through it. I knew if I just tuned everything out and just did what I had to do. And I see so many people do it now so wonderfully. You know, they're just killing it there, doing a great job that. There's just so many great singers out there now you see on TV and uh, doing the national anthem. I'm just glad to be part of somebody that did, that has done it, you know. That was that was excellent. I, I really Thank you. to me that was pretty that was that had to be one of the best moments. Thank you. It was. <laughs> Even leaving there. 
Uh. When my family was leaving there, they were high fiving my parents, my kids. It was it was just a dream. It yeah. was like a dream, you know. I guess you're right. You got to really cherish those good moments in life because they don't come every day, you know. All right. And let's talk about also. So I mean, with the good, I'm sure there's hasn't been some easy times, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, one of your one of the obstacles uh, in your career, and and we talked about that a little bit. You haven't had too many major obstacles, but. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been pretty fortunate. I mean, there's been some discouraging times um, over the years where you feel like you know you're a long, long way from home, and you know. Uh, there's an isolation that, uh, like, for instance, I did like 50 nights with the Commitments from Dublin. Their guitar player had a heart attack. I went and met them in Detroit, went up to Vancouver, went all across Canada in a tour bus with 12 guys playing every night. And the, the gigs were great, and the people were great. But, you know, just not seeing any of your friends or your family for... That long. And, and them not actually seeing how great you're, of a time you're yeah. having is almost bittersweet because you wish that they could experience sure. it with you. Yeah. So, I mean, in that sense, I'm not complaining. I mean, I've been very lucky. So. Yeah. But we, and, and you did mention too that, um, you know, this is not an easy career. And, yeah, you were, you were asking me earlier about what, I, what advice I would give to young kids. Kids, yeah. Coming up, and I, of course, it's not easy, and nothing's easy. But uh, like I said to you um, earlier tonight, I, I feel like you know I didn't choose music; it, it chose me, and uh, it, it's just such a, a passion. You know, I really, I really don't do it for the money, but I have a family, right? So I'm lucky I could support my family doing what I love to do, and if I made no money, I would still do it. I still love it that much. I love playing. We would still listen. Well, thank you. <laughs> and if I can make money and, and buy baby new shoes here and there, I'm doing all right. And my family's very supportive. My wife's very supportive. My kids, they're a little embarrassed by, by what I do. But that's, that's uh, understandable. I mean, the greatest thing I ever did, which I should say, is make a record with my kids. Uh, that children's album is you all, all songs I wrote with my children. Oh, really? And, and I didn't do it on purpose. I mean, I didn't set out to write songs with my kids. I just asked them if they had any suggestions. And that's what made them actually decide to help me. If I said, let's make a children's record, or you should perform with me, they would say no. But, right. But I'm like, You're I'm like, working oh, on this. Yeah, I'm working on this <laughs> verb song. You know, well, let's, let's think about something, you know. So that, now they're, you know, that a few years have gone by. And I have some big children's shows coming up, so I still do that in schools and amphitheaters. And sometimes my kids will come up and help me uh, do these songs, these children's songs. So oh, that's, that's another. Awesome. So I've I've created an outlet for to express myself with my kids too. And and with your uh, education that that absolutely. you went for, absolutely, absolutely. You know, talk about coming home. Um, I hear part of that CD is uh, there's a live. Yes. Uh, from Club web, here, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's the a studio CD of the children's record and the, and the live show, live show from Web Web Elementary. Now it used to be junior, junior high, but high yeah. right. We did a, a nice show there and recorded it. And uh, thank you to everybody at Weathersfield that pulled that off for us. Yeah. So that's amazing. So um, now, you know, our our show here is called uh, Homegrown Talent Exposed. So one of the questions I do like to ask everybody is, you know, what do you feel was really that one big break for you? You know, was it, did it happen when you were with Texas Flood? Um, or, you know, was well, it well, prior Texas, to that? Or Yeah, I would say um, it was a series of a bunch of little breaks that equated to one. Um, one was the the heavy hitter album becoming number seven on the billboard charts right. at the same time i landed a role in this movie called cathedral pines as a blue collar carpenter from new jersey the movie was not as successful as i would have liked it to be <laughs> but at least it gave me an experience of acting with some pretty uh pretty successful actors which is a great experience that was yeah. a great experience yeah. i mean uh Okay, so you had the heavy hitter album, you had that. Then you had the Red Sox. 
that coincided. Then I had a tour with BB King, and then I and then I uh, went out to California with my band and Jay Giles, and we got a chance to perform with some of the guys in the Grateful Dead for a, a few nights. And wow. uh, I was explaining to Phil Lesh of the Grateful Dead how one of my best friends uh, followed them forever, and and he passed away. But I know he's here right now, and he's the reason why I'm meeting you right now. And Phil really dug that, and so just to just to make music with these guys that you and I listened to back in high school, right. um, and had a lot of respect for them back then. I, I think that's you know that was probably my 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 own personal break. break yeah. yeah, excellent. Yeah. So well, um, I'm really excited because behind me over here somewhere is. Yes. Um, a little setup. We have and a guitar setup, so, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm really excited to hear this, and I'm hoping that um, you're okay with that over let's here. Let's play we got some this. songs. Yeah, sure. let's, cool. All right. Let's hear this. So Jeff is going to do a song for me that I've chosen tonight, and um, this song is called Simple Man, and uh, my son doesn't know it yet, but he's going to be dancing with me to that song when he gets married. So, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me no greater pleasure than to introduce you to Mr. Jeff Pitchell. Thank you. Mama told me when I was young, sit beside me, my only son. Listen closely to what I say. If you do this, it'll help you. Some sunny day Just take your time Don't live too fast
you're saying. That was no good at all. <laughs> I hope it came out all right. <laughs> you're amazing. Thank you. All right, ready to do another one? Yeah. Well, I guess you think 
it's funny, I think it's funny too. Only guys with money could wrap their arms around you, but babe, it's only the truth. Like an apple or two. For this, <laughs> what do you think? What should I do, Matt? Here, I was thinking. Is that one? Was that one of yours? Yeah, that yeah. was I for an eye. That's yeah. yeah. Sunshine when she's gone It's not warm when she's away You know sunshine when you're gone This house just in the wall Anytime she goes away Wonder this time when she's gone Wonder if she's gonna stay Ain't no sunshine when she's gone This house is in no home Anytime she goes away And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know I know, I know, I know, I know She's gone On the dark beds Every day Ain't no sunshine When she's gone This house is in the home Anytime she goes away Don't you go much for that my that pleasure thank you for amazing. having me thank you and i'm so glad that you um played that song there eye for an eye um that's off uh this cd right here uh yep. fat cigars just yes. pitchell in texas flood that's right and um 
you know, I, I know that uh, I think it was on January 4th you were at Pazos Cafe. Yep, That's yep. a little local small place. And sure. here, obviously, you're, you're here with, uh, you know, your, your solo acoustic, yes. if you will. And, um, but talk a little bit about what else uh, happens with your band because it's not only just you and acoustic. It's Right. We have uh, a lot of configurations we could do. Go solo acoustic, solo uh, duo, and a drummer is uh, the duo. Then we have the three-piece, bass, drums, and guitar. Then we have uh, the four-piece to add the piano. Five-piece to add the, the sax. That's how we primarily go out. Sax, drums, guitar, piano, bass. And then uh, we add the, the Jeffettes, the girls from Atlanta. Uh, they're on the Jay Guile show and a lot of the bigger shows. And so that brings us up to seven. And a lot of times on those shows, we might have trumpet and, um, and another drummer so and percussion. So it's, uh, you know, that's the biggest configuration we go out with. So, so you know, whatever, whatever the, the gig calls for, we bring that many folks. Excellent. And so that Eye for an Eye song, talk about that. That song uh, I wrote as a, um, it's almost like a, like the title says, an eye for an eye, it's about uh, relationships where a guy goes out with his friends so the woman might want to go out with her friends the next night just to get back at the guy. And um, that song won a, a Nashville Songwriters Award. And uh, John Mayall recorded it and put it on his last record uh, from John Mayall and the Blues Breakers. So that was, that was, um, that was a big thrill for me because he's a blues legend uh, from the British Invasion. And so to have him uh, put that, record my song was a, was a big thrill. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for um, having I me. I really great appreciate to see it. You. It's Thank been you. so great Thank to you see for you. Me. Thank you. And we have something for you. Oh, for I get being my homegrown here. talent. You get your oh. own homegrown talent. Yeah. Have you seen TV 14? Thank you very much. And, um,. Oh, and before you go, I, I, I know that there's a, a benefit going on, too, that you had mentioned. Uh, yes, March 26th, I'll so be out with a, Jay Giles at the Russian Lady in New Haven. And that's with Jay Giles yep. as well. Yep. So, excellent. And it benefits people who are, uh, they need assistance keeping their houses. Right, you mentioned that earlier. It's called Face earlier. the Music, yeah. Face, Face the, the music. music is the name of the organization. It's a charity organization, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, that'll be... An opportunity for people that uh, watch here if they can get out there or want to donate to the organization Absolutely. or whatever. So. Awesome. Excellent. So our last thing, you just need to sign. Oh, thank we you. <laughs> here we go. This is awesome. Jeff Pitchell. Thanks.